someone next to you, tell the person you, I'm welcome to church. Glad to have you here. Hope you're having a nice time. All right, so I bring you greetings from Pastor Nifemi from Brazil. So he has gotten there and he is greeting us. He's actually on live stream right now. So we can say hi, Pastor. You can show. Hi, Pastor. Yeah, so all right. Okay, so thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Man, can you celebrate yourselves? for being in church today. Thank you, Agape Music Group. Can we celebrate them? Man, the best choir in Europe. It's, you guys are doing it as if it's fake. It's the real fact. The best choir in Europe. All right. So, uh, first and first, before we dive into the message, it will be, I think I have 47 minutes left. Yeah. Right? I will be in time today. All right, so, I just, the testimony that the sister gave, I wanted to use it because I just wanted to say something in that light first. I've realized that one of the challenges of, I would use exam in particular, is lack of understanding of your capacity, like who you are. Hallelujah. So always try to grab awareness of who you are. If you see what she said, she started speaking to those things that are telling her you can't do this. So you can even make them physical or you can just say, no, I can, you don't, you might not need to name the things that are against you because naming the things that are against you can make you feel overwhelmed. So it's better you spend time in knowing what is for you. Hallelujah. So get, you see, so you build yourself, you build, you keep, but that's why Paul says we renew our mind. We are not conformed to the patterns of this world, but we will renew our mind so that we will be able to prove what is the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. So you have to come to know. That's why he said in Ephesians that they will know some certain things. The hope of his calling, the exceeding greatness of his inheritance in the sense, and the exceeding greatness of his power that is, that is in and for us. Hallelujah. So it's in and it's also for us. Hallelujah. Ephesians, I think we're in one. Okay. All right. So it's in and, in and also for us. He now went further to explain that power that is in. And for us, he says, it is the same power that he used when he rose Jesus from the dead. So, building your mind and getting, like, assured in what you have in Christ Jesus is the solution you need to so many problems. Hallelujah. Like, anytime you're, you're losing confidence, self-esteem, just go and sit and get awareness of who you are, who you are, who you are. That's why when Love Dominion started, the first assignment pastor gives almost everybody is underlined in him, in whom, in the book of Ephesians. Because there you will see everything that you have in him. In him I have redemption. In him I've got sound mind. I am more than a conqueror through him. Hallelujah. So you see all this in him, in him, in him, in him. And that's how you overcome these things. All right. So always feast your mind on becoming more aware of who you are in Christ Jesus, what you have in Christ Jesus, and that's it. Hallelujah. All right, so, uh, choir is, I don't know how they do it, <laughs> but the, 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 during the worship, praise and worship, they were just re-echoing the message, re-echoing the topic I, I actually want to talk about. So, Pastor even had to, oh, don't worry, that's a joke. But, yeah, that's between me and him. All right, so, Let's do Romans. So we are talk, we're going to be talking about serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. So uh, he was singing, I won't stop serving. Right? So at some point he switched the song to serving. And I was like, did this guy hear when I was communicating and all that? But I, it, that gladdened my heart. It means we are in line like it's the same direction. The Holy is one spirit. Hallelujah. So that's the thing of joy for me. So I would have loved us to do a long reading, but I don't think I've got that time. So... Because, but I think I will. Romans 12, we'll start from verse 1. <laughs> yes. All right. I will hold my Bible. Romans 12. I beseech, ye, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So, pay attention. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Hallelujah. Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. So it means in your body. Let, let's, let me say something, then we'll read again. So I have not gotten where I was going. So in your body now, you have hand, eyes, legs, toes, We've not even talked about the internal organs. We're talking about what we're seeing. So your hand cannot say, I'm alone. So the hand still belongs to the eyes, belongs to the leg. Hallelujah. So the, every part of the body, body belongs to the body. Yes? All right. So let's be reading. Uh, verse 6. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the profession of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exalted exaltation, da, 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 da. Let's do verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation, about that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another, Verse 11, not slothful in business, fervent in, the, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So, we saw what we, we just read some, uh, 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 from Romans 12, so, talking about service, how we ought to be, uh, uh, act towards one another. He got to the end of that uh, chapter, verse 11, he says, serving the Lord, not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord service hallelujah that word serving the lord there is also like someone under authority of someone that word serving the lord comes from the origin word like slave bondage someone that is under authority that's why if you remember the centurion man in matthew 6 right so when when he met jesus he said speak just your word hallelujah and Jesus was like, why is this man saying I should speak just my word? He said, I'm also a man under authority. So I have servants. I have people serving me, serving the Lord. That word serving, we can also replace it as servants, ministers. Hallelujah. So we're finding different words, right? So he said, I also have servants that I say, go there, do this, do that, and they do it. Right? So it's also that same way that he said that, no, just give your word. Because I know that when you give your word, creation will obey. So they are under your subjection. They are servants to you. Am I making sense? So the same way, he says, come under authority of the Lord. Serve the Lord. Serve in the Lord. Be under authority of the Lord. But in the kingdom, when we talk about service, eh, serving the Lord, serving the Lord, we can also use that same word like serving in the body. So serving in the church. When you're involved in uh, 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 gathering people, teaching people, service in the church. Service to the body of Christ is also serving the Lord. Praying for people, praying for people in the body of Christ is also serving the Lord. Let me show you an example. Romans 1. Let's just see. I'll just touch this then. We'll now dive further into what I want to say. Romans 1, let's do verse 9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. How is he serving in my spirit? This is Paul writing this. He says that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. So praying for others is service to the Lord. He's serving the Lord in the spirit. Serving in the body, serving, serving your local assembly is service to the body, is service to the Lord. Hallelujah. But when we talk about service in the New Testament, we have a principal person, a principal personality that we always emulate. Hallelujah. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. So you have to go through him. Hallelujah. So that means 
when it comes to kingdom service, we need to see how service is done in the kingdom through the lenses or through the words or through the mind of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because that is the best person to explain. Hebrews 1, it says, Hebrews 1, from verse 1. For God, in time past, in diverse manners, spoke to us in sundry times, in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hallelujah. Verse 2. But now, hath in these last days, he has spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the world. Verse 3. Whom being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. So when we want to understand service through the lenses of God or through the perspective of God himself, we need to understand service from the perspective of Jesus. Because Hebrews 1 is telling us that he is the express image of his person. Colossians 1 will tell us that for it pleased God that in him should dwell the fullness of God here the bodily. I think, yes, for it pleased God that in him should dwell the fullness of God here the bodily. Then, hallelujah. So that means that the character, the perfect character of God will be seen in the person of Jesus. We are clear, right? So when we want to talk about service in the New Testament as believers, we need to understand service from the perspective of Jesus because that's how we'll be in line, right? All right. So when we talk about service in the kingdom, let's see example how Jesus did it. Matthew. Matthew. All right, Matthew 20. All right, let's do from verse 25. So we'll pay attention to reading here because we are trying to compare two different types of uh, dominion or rulership or service. How the people that have rule over you or that how you ought to serve in the kingdom. Let's, let's use that word. How you ought to serve your your mindset towards service because we read in where we started romans 12 it says we need to renew our minds do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will be able to prove what what is good acceptable and perfect will of god it's there romans uh, 12 verse 2 i think so yes all right so why we are doing this teaching is because the word repentance means change the way you think Change how you're thinking something. So what are we doing? We want to see service from a different perspective. So that when we think kingdom service, it will not be something very bogus to you or they want to enslave you or something. We also see where does kingdom service spring from? What tree, What prompts us to serve? Do you understand? So we're going to see that. Matthew 20. Let's see. Verse 25. I don't think I need. Okay. I love to hold my Bible. Yes. But Jesus called unto him, uh, verse 25, but Jesus called unto him, called them unto him and said, ye know the princes of the Gentiles. So the princes are the people that have rulership, like of the Gentiles, meaning of the world. So Paul will use the words like, you were once Gentiles in Ephesians. You were once far off. Uh, the same spirit that is working in the children of disobedience. Do you understand? So it's an explanation. We've pastor have done an explanation of who are Gentiles and who are Jews. Do you understand? <laughs> All right. So Gentiles are those that are not Jewish. So growing up, I had a catechism class. Uh, I learned in Igbo. Gentiles, Jew. So everybody that is not a Jew. So everybody that is not a Jew is a Gentile. So if you're not from the Commonwealth of Israel. You're a Gentile. Don't worry. So all of us are Gentile. Yes. So, so Jesus was trying to explain to them using us as example here. Be, be in the picture. Hallelujah. So he said, he brought them unto them and said, Ye know the prince of the Gentiles, they exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so amongst you. So that means... There is a way they do it in the Gentile world, and but it, there is a way it ought to be amongst you. So he's making a clear distinction. That is why Jesus also said things like, I, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. So because there is different peace, there is different service. There is so there is everything, everything that 
I will say everything because they, they should I say it? No. Most things we have, there is a counterfeit for it in the world. So you need to pay attention on how what you are accepting. So that's why we're going to carefully see service from the lens of Jesus. All right. So verse 26. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your servant. That minister there is also that same word, servant. Let him be the one that serves. So are you seeing the mindset now? So the greater one in the kingdom is the one that is serving. But, the, but in the world, the ones that are greater are the ones that exert dominion. So you're seeing a different type of service when it comes in the world and in the kingdom. Let's keep reading. And who will and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Remember, I said something that Jesus is the principal person of our gospel. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, of the gospel of the of the cross, because it is the power of God unto salvation. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, we believe. When we confess that Christ died and God rose him up from the third, on the third day, we shall be saved. So our gospel is centered around Christ. Right? So now, verse 28. Let's see. He said something. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life for ransom for many. So meaning that me, your principal person of this gospel, he's saying, I did not come for you to serve me. I came to be of service to you. So in the kingdom, service is in a different way. The greater serves. So it's a different type. Hallelujah. So in the kingdom, the more you serve, the more greatness. But in the world, the more you are great, the more you are exerting dominion. The more you have rulership over people. Hallelujah. All right. So now, also in the kingdom, we can see in this verse 28, it says, I did not come to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life for ransom for many. When it comes to the kingdom, service to God is always people-centered. So to God, service when he thinks service, when, when he thinks doing something, when he sends you, when, he, when God appoints you to do anything, it is always people-centered. It is, it is always towards people, directed towards people. God will not anoint you for yourself. He will anoint you for people. He will empower you for people. Hallelujah. So it's always people-centered. So service in the kingdom is always looking out for people. Yes? All right. So we're getting it. That's why the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave. So he did something because of the world. So it's always people-centered. Hallelujah. All right. Let's see. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Let's see First John because this will make sense when I say service is people centered. Let's let me show you because service is always directed to people. Jesus died for the world, died for you and I, so he didn't have to die. For God made him who knew no sin to become sin, so that you will become the righteousness of God. So you always see in the kingdom, he says, if a if a seed of corn remaineth alone, he, he abides alone. But if he should die. He will bring forth much more. Hallelujah. So it, our gospel is a gospel of sacrificing our own self for others. So in the kingdom, service is always towards others. That's where I'm coming from. Let's see somewhere in First John so that maybe it will help us touch this. Do I want to do First John? First, yeah, yeah, let's do First John. Okay, no, let's do Ephesians. Let's do First John. Let's do First John. First John 4. Let's do 1 John 4. 1 John 4, let's do verse 9. Verse 8, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, uh, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because God sent his only begotten son in the world 
that we might through him live. Herein is the love of God, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. So you're seeing how he exemplified the law by giving himself, by doing something, by serving you, right? All right, so verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Verse 12, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, then God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. So you see that it is in line with people. So if we love others, how do we know that we love God when we love others? How do we know that we are serving God right when we are serving people? We are serving people in the local assembly, in the church. That's how you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I, are we all together? All right. Let's see. First Peter. So I said it's always directed towards people. Let's do Ephesians before First Peter. So also, in the body of Christ, I told you that God to God, whenever he gives you an assignment to the body, it's always towards people. It's not for your own good. It's for the betterment of the people. So let's see Ephesians 4, where he said he gave us to be pastors, apostles, prophets. Let's see why he did all that. Because it's also directed how? To the people. Ephesians 4, 11. Yes. Perfect. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. So this saint is, in another translation, it will be for the perfecting of the children of God, for the believers, for the saints. For the work of ministry, for, the, for edifying the body of Christ. Remember, who is the body of Christ? Who is the body of Christ? Me and you. Who is the body of Christ? You are not bold enough. Who is the body of Christ? Uh-huh. So, we are the body of Christ. So, the reason why God sent certain people to serve in the church is so that they would edify the body. And why is so that until they come to perfect knowledge, unity of faith, and knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So he gave set, certain set of people to equip each and every one of us until we come to fullness, full measure of the person of Christ. So service in the kingdom is always directed towards people. Even when he sent uh, 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 apostles to us, prophets to us. Remember in Acts of the Apostles, Acts 6, when uh, uh, they were arguing over food and fighting, they, were, they are not serving us enough food. Peter said something. Appoint men within you that are filled with the Spirit that will serve tables, but we will give ourselves to prayer and ministering of the word. So, ministry of the word, that is also serving the word. Hallelujah. So, remember when we read in Matthew, he said, the Son of Man did not come to be ministered unto, but to minister unto you. So, what Peter said that we, that we are going to be doing, oh, media is very fast these days. They always jump. It's good. It's good. They are doing well. Actually, let's celebrate the media. Yeah. All right. So, but just stay in, uh, we are in, where are we now? Let's stay in uh, Ephesians. No, no, Acts of the Apostles. I was, uh, don't worry, don't go there. I, I'm just quoting it. All right, Acts. So, that scripture in Acts, it says, so, I think you were there in Acts, Acts 6. Yes. So, remember Matthew 20 said, don't worry, just stay in Acts 6. I will uh, talk and come back. So, it says, I did not come to be ministered unto, but to minister unto people. Right? So, Peter is saying here, select men, that will help us to serve. Because in Ephesians 4, the, the ministry, uh, 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 should I call it gifts, or the people that God gave as gift to the body, the only listed prophets, apostles, in Corinthians, they added both help ministers, uh, works. You understand? So there are other uh, 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 aspects of service. Now, but Peter was saying here, find people whom we may appoint over this business, the business of serving who are they going to be serving themselves? No, serving people. 
So why did they even appoint seven people in the first place? To help to serve people better. So everything in the kingdom is triggered from better service of the people. So it's always people driven. People driven. Then Peter now said something. We are not going to just focus on food because man shall not live by bread alone. Meaning that bread is also important for living, right? But not only bread. So they made a clear, they, they had to set up people, make sure that food is done well so that people will not be hungry and they will not be grumbling. Because if you go where they are sharing food and they don't give you your appropriate portion, even if the food is free, you will go home with anger. That is the truth. You will go home thinking they don't like you there. Why are they giving me small portion? That's the truth. The grief is, is brooding in the heart. It's very, these things are not, it's not like one big demon will appear and it's like, no, it's just one small thing. They not, the meat they gave you was smaller portion than the person next to you offense. So Peter had to set up men, hallelujah, to do this better. So that when they are serving better, there will be better unity. The reason why they started this is because there was commotion because of food. If they did not fight because of food, Peter will not set out people. I want you to see, I want us to see what prompted them to do this. So that we will come to better unity. Because if we have people serving this table, they are trusted, honest, see? Honest, of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. So they have honest report, meaning these men are trusted. So we'll bring them to serve people so that they will be, so that we will not have commotion in that aspect. But it says we, we are still also going to be giving ourselves to prayer and to also be serving you the word. So he did not appoint people serving the table and said, okay, now I'm going to just go and relax at home. No, he's still saying, we were also going to be serving something to you. So even when they are delegating jobs, it's still to make it easier for us to reach better people better. Hallelujah. Man, I think I've spent a very long time. And we have not even, we are still like in the definition. This is not good. All right. All right. So service in the kingdom is people directed. Also, we can have certain types of, uh, I don't want to say types of service. We have something we call right service, serving right, and eye service, right? Sa right service and eye service. We are going to see from the scriptures. Let's see Ephesians. I think let's, Ephesians 6. So we've got, uh, I, I hope, before we go into this one, let me make sure the first one, I did not paramplate many. All right. So what I was trying to do for the last 30 minutes or 25 minutes was to explain service to you. Did you understand? Yes, sir. All right. And to explain how service works in the kingdom. So those that are serving are regarded as the greater ones in the kingdom. So the, the more authority you have, the more service you render to the people. I, we also said that service in the kingdom is always directed towards people. So when God thinks about service, he thinks about people. He thinks about you and I. When God gave Jesus, he was not thinking about himself. He was thinking about you and I. Hallelujah. So it's always people directed. We read in John about when we have not seen God, First John, but when you have people. Also, Jesus will say, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was thirsty, you did not give me water. And they will ask him, when were you hungry and when were you thirsty? And he will say, when that poor man was there, you did not give him food. Meaning, Proverbs, he says, when you give to the... Don't worry, we're going to read there. Let's, let me not jump there. Hallelujah. All right, so now we've done intro. So let's go to right, service. So now we can have what we call, oh, they're already there, Matthew 25, media. All right, so Ephesians 6, let's do Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, let's do from verse 5. Servant, be obedient to your master. Sorry, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. So this is not even spiritual something. This is Paul is relating this to the physical world now. And how we ought to act in the physical world now, right? Good. Where am I? Verse 6. 
Verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Verse 6. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God, from where? From the heart. Hallelujah. Verse 7. With good will, doing service as unto the Lord and not unto men. So we saw there that there is right service unto the Lord and I service. I, I don't want to start going into Greek word where it comes from origin and all those things. But I service is always when you're doing something with the mindset that someone will come and look at it and appraise you. When So that means in the kingdom... You can be serving rightly with your heart towards God. But you, and there are people that are also serving to, because of people that will be watching them. But we can now say, what about when Jesus said, Men, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Meaning that men can actually see your works. But it ought to be the good work. Because if it's the good work, the glory goes to the Father. Hallelujah. So, and good work springs from the heart. That's why he says, but we, from, da, 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 da. media, just stay in Ephesians. And where, where are we? Ephesians, just stay there. Don't worry. All right. Uh, six, six. I think I would do my Bible. All right. So, so let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. So, verse 6. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ. So, doing the will of God from the heart. So, doing it diligently from your heart. Not because your, your, this is Paul speaking to servants in the flesh. Not because your boss is going to come and see or when your boss is looking, that's when you are doing perfect job. No, he's saying you are you ought to be doing that your day-to-day -day service as unto the Lord, not doing it because he's going to come and look and point and say this is good, this is not good. Hallelujah. Why am I saying this? Because good service or right service is from the heart. But I service, you're hoping that someone will come and appraise you. But it's not also bad because people can actually come and appraise you. But why are we saying this thing? Why? What is the uh, uh, intent behind what Paul is writing? He's talking about the intention behind why you are doing what you're doing. If the reason why you are serving is so that they will see you and say, well done, then you are doing eye service. But if you are serving with the heart towards God, of course, people can still come and tell you, oh yeah, awesome, you're doing a good job, glory to God. Just what Jesus said, they will see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. If you are focused on eye service, if people don't praise you, it becomes a problem. That's, that's why offense starts brooding in the heart. So when you've done it, done it, done it, done it, done it, no one told you, well done, man, well done, sir. You say, those people, they're not even noticing what I'm doing, sir. No, I don't need to notice you. God is noticing you. God looks at the heart. Let's see some, let's see. Sam, Samuel, yeah, yeah. let's see. God looks at the heart. First Samuel. First Samuel, let's see something about, it's the David story. So, I, I'm, I'm mentioning this heart. So, doing the will of God from the heart. From the heart. So, let's do First Samuel 16. Let's do First Samuel 16. Sorry, you guys have to tell me how to do this. I have 40 minutes. Awesome. Thank you, sir. No, no, media already told I, I already know. I don't, don't, don't mind me, brother Daniel. David. First Samuel 16. All right. This is about the story of uh, Samuel. And the Lord said, sorry, David, anointing of David. <laughs> Let's not say the story of Samuel. The Lord said unto Samuel, How long will I will how long will thou mourn? Of for Saul and verse 2, verse 3. 
and call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Verse 4. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, blah, 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 5. Yes, and he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me. So he was telling Jesse's family to prepare themselves and come. Verse 6. And it came to pass when they were come. That, so Samuel now looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord has anointed, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. So Samuel has seen the physical. And it's possible Eliab was a very huge guy who is very huge. Royal. Yeah, so very not a tall, huge, let's say Joseph, if he should add some muscles, right? So very huge, good looking, tall, young man. Samuel sees him. This must be the one that the Lord has anointed because he's looking at the physical. But, let's go to verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. And it's not because of his stature that God refused him. God will not refuse you. <laughs> For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. It is not you that is refused. Yes. Because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as men see it. For man look on the outward, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So you see where the eyes of God is? What is the posture of your heart as you're doing what you're doing? Where was David when they came to anoint him? Serving the sheep of his father. In active service. Samuel thought he's the one that is always at home. The Eliab, the guy, the one that is protecting the house. Oh, it must be him. No, God, is, God told him, no, I don't see as men see. I'm looking towards something else. Posture of the heart. How is your heart? Where is the heart? So right service comes from the heart. Then high service is the one you are hoping for people to praise you. Then when they praise you, then you receive your glory. Then you receive your boasting. It is also why Jesus said something about the Pharisees that when they pray or when they are fasting, they want to stand by the corner of the road so that people will be seeing them. So they want the intention of fasting and praying is so that people will see them and say, this guy is, this guy is a ginger brother. This guy is awesome. No, 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 no. So that's why I said, when you are going to pray, go and hide yourself inside. So I, I get to think about this. What of when we did BT on the street? We prayed on the street. We prayed outside. We prayed, we worshipped outside. What was the intention why we did that? To herald the gospel. We did not go to sing outside or dance outside so that people would say, ah, these people, they are very prayerful people. No. Am I making sense? So the reason why Jesus will attack the praying outside is because of the intention behind it. The reason why they are standing there to pray. Because I believe, I believe so well, I, I, this is not a doctrine, but I believe that God can instruct you to go to certain locations in your certain areas to stand and pray for some certain time. I believe so. Don't, this is my own, <laughs> hallelujah. So, why am I saying this? Why am I emphasizing on this? Because we need to understand that the reason why there is a difference between good works and eye service or right works that springs from the heart is because of a, the intention, the intent, the reason why you are doing what you are doing. Hallelujah. All right. So we've seen the uh, summer story. God looks at the heart. He does not see the outward appearance. That is why the guy in Ephesians 6, he will tell the servant, don't serve your master because you want him to come and praise you. He also used that in Colossians. But I love the NIV version of Colossians. Colossians... Uh, Three. Colossians 3. You also said something about that I service something. The Colossians one is more very. Okay, let me open my Bible by myself. Colossians 3. Let's do 22. Servants, obey in all things your master according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. 
And whatsoever ye do, do it heartedly as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive reward. Are you seeing it there? So it is of the Lord that we actually rise service. Five minutes. All right. Actually, rise service has things attached to it. Why am I stressing this step? Because there are honors and blessings attached to serving. So serving does not go without reward. But it has to be right service. Rightly done. Hallelujah. It's the intention, the reason why you are serving must be right. Because Hebrews 6, it says, for God is not, we will go there later. Later. <laughs> All right. So now, remember, because I said we have right service and eye service, we're also going to have something called good works. And if we have good works, then that means there are works that we can do that are not good. Hallelujah. So the ones that are not right. Because they said, men will see your good works and glorify your father. Those good works are the ones springing from your heart. How? What is the intention? Okay, now, maybe we should get to the next page. Right, good. Right service or good works or serving right or yielding to the Father rightly. It has a place it has its origin from. It has its origin from one place, which is our heart. But what in our heart is what is prompting us to serve rightly. And that is love. Hallelujah. So let's see. Philippians 2. Let's see. The intent, the reason why we serve, the reason why we should serve rightly is because of the love of Christ that is in our heart. It's because of love. That is the origin of where service, right service originates from. It must be done towards love. Remember, when you do anything towards love, we read in 1 John 4 that when you love God, you have to love people. We read that in 1 John 4, right? So meaning that service, right service, must spring from a place of love. And whatever springs from a place of love is, is never selfish. And when it's not selfish, it's directed towards people. Am I making sense? So we are saying the same thing. We are just saying it from this side, saying it from this side, saying it from this side. For God so loved the world, he gave. So what was the uh, triggering factor of his giving? Good. Philippians 2. If there be any consolation, if Christ, if consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So we are still going to use the principal person of our gospel as an example. On how we ought to do things. Right? So that's what we are also doing here now. Verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. To receive appraisal. It should not be done for you to receive some appraisal and all that. Right? But in lowliness of mind. Let each one esteem other better than themselves. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own thing. But every man also on the things of the uh, So he says also, meaning you will be watching your own thing, you know, but be watching others too. Hallelujah. So we need to be very, he's not saying forget your own, like, you know you have stuff. You know you have, we, we are humans. Let me say this. We have, I, I know we have personal things we are all going through. But Paul is saying, don't be looking just for that, your own thing. Also be aware that the next person has things he's going through too. That awareness will help your relationship with them better. Just having them in mind that ah, this person might also be going through some things. So it will make you want to pray for them. Even the ones you cannot walk up to to talk to, it will make you want to pray for them. So let's not read. Let's not, let me not forget and parambulate. Let's read. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So it means that there was it means that there was a mind that was in Christ Jesus 
that Paul is trying to let these guys know about. Let's see it. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. So we are seeing our principal factor, our principal person in the gospel. Jesus is, Paul is explaining to us what he did. He says, he, he being equal with God, he did not think, so Jesus knew he was equal with God. He did not think it robbery. He did not think, he said, I will leave this glory to come and die for us. Hallelujah. He made himself of no reputation, taking the likeness of men. So he was obeying the will of the father. Remember, Jesus said, I will not do anything except my father has commanded me. Remember, we started from Romans 12 and we said that the word service is also someone that is under authority, someone that is un held under, uh, that word is also, but I don't want to use bondage because it will look very scary. So I want to use under authority. So you're under authority of the Lord. That's why Jesus will say, I cannot do anything of my own except the Father has told me. Meaning, as he was on earth, he was serving the Lord. He was under authority from heaven. Right? So he took, made himself of no reputation, took the likeness of men, verse 8, and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. So now, this is what he did in service. Hallelujah. Now, service, I said, because we are rounding up now. I said something. Service, when you serve God rightly, it has its honor. It has its blessings. Now, let's see verse 9. What now happened? Because he humbled himself. Wherefore, God had highly exalted him. This exaltation did not come because he was just Jesus. He, it came because he humbled himself, made himself of no reputation, became flesh. That's why Peter will say, humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord, uh, uh, Peter, right? And he will exalt you in due time. So God has highly exalted him and given him a name. So service, right service, brings honor and exaltation. You cannot serve God rightly if you don't humble yourself under his mighty arm. If you are not under his authority, imagine a servant that is not humble towards his master. Just think about it. You have a servant. You have a house help that you command and they say, I can't do that. Go and bring me water. Impossible. <laughs> what would you do? You might not slap. You might tell them, I'll be going home. You are sacked. You are no longer. Am I making sense? It's the same way. So we are under authority of the Lord. We need to come humble under the mighty hand of the Lord. That's why Paul will say, shall we not be subject to the father of spirit that we will see life? Why am I saying all these things? We came to the point where we read Philippians 2 that where service springs from is from love. And that was the mind that Jesus had that made him to lose all things to become us. And in losing all those things, because of the love he had for us, God highly exalted him and gave him a name above every other name. That's why in John 12, Jesus will say things like, those that serve me, maybe we should sue that. I'm already coming to an end. Uh, 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 forgive me. John 12, John 12. Let's just read it quickly, quickly, quickly. John 12, John 12, John 12, John 12. Let's see 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servants be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Are you seeing it? Let if any man serve me, that him will my father honor. So service brings honor. Hebrews 6. Let's see all the, let's just talk, let's just read them because I don't want us to just go without seeing the benefits of serving. Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, 10. But I think I want that in NIV. Do we have another verse in NIV? Hebrews 6, 10. Let's just do that. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him 
as you have helped his people and continue to help them. So are you still seeing that it's still centered around people? The love work that the Bible says God is not unjust to forget our labor of love. So God, I always think this scripture. So that means if it's not labor of love, God can forget. And it won't mean that he's unjust. So the one that he cannot forget, that when he forgets, it will become unjust, is the labor born out of love. And he's saying that, how did we see that you love these people? You helped his people and you continue to help them. King James used the word saints. You help the saints. Because I also told you that another word for saints, you are a saint. Because you might be thinking, why is this guy saying all these things? If I ask you to call mention saints, you might be saying saint, Paul saint, this. Those guys, but they are not, they are dead already. They are, we can say these are sleeping saints. But if I ask you who is a saint now, you can say Saint Chigose, Saint Fortune, Saint Chinere, Saint Amarachi, Saint V. You say, no. That's the truth. No, no, no. Actually, the, the title of being a saint is not something that I don't know how to explain it. Is you as like, how are you a saint? You believe in Jesus. You have been washed, your blood washed. You are a child of God. If, if they go back to King James, you will see that this helped his people and continued to help them was written as saints. That's exactly what I'm saying. Go to King James. Let's, let's see it, maybe. So that you understand. And minister to the saints. So, is it dead people that they are talking about there? No. Living people. Who are the living people? The church. You, me. So who is the saint? You. So now, because you're a saint. Ah, good. And because service springs from love. Where we read in First John says, not because we loved God, but he loved us. Right? So now, uh, uh, Romans will now tell us. Romans 5. He says, for, let's do this. Romans 5. Let's, let's do Romans 5. Romans 5. Verse 5. Forgive me. Uh, uh, I, I, I just have maybe two, three scriptures. No, one, one or two. One or two, one or two. Romans 5, Romans 5. And hope make, Romans 5 verse 5. And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost which is given us. So that means you have love domicile inside of you. How? By the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says those that are led, it's a leading of the Spirit. Led through love. Led out of sin into righteousness. Those that have been led into righteousness. They are sons of God. Those that are following the leading of love. Hallelujah. So now you have the love of God shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. How do I know you have the Holy Spirit? Ephesians, he said, after that you heard and believed in your heart, you were sealed with the same spirit of promise. So meaning you have love inside of you. Say, I have love inside of me. I have love inside of me. Now, how did you receive that love? By the impartation of the Spirit. Where we read in Romans 5, it says, we've, we've, love has been shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So now, we will follow the leading of love. In whatever we do, we follow the leading of love. In service, when we are thinking, when we want to, when we, in every area of our life, in, in service in the local assembly, in your day-to-day -day activities, follow the way of love. Be ready to be spent by God. Serve. Let me tell you something. Jesus was the only begotten of the Father. He now became the first begotten of the Father. Meaning that there are many begottens of the Father. You are a begotten of the Father. Meaning Jesus was the express image of Godhead bodily. The one that we are seeing. But now, he is now inside of you. So you are now that express image. So that means people should see right service from you. People should see right way of serving, right way of loving. Because it's not the way the world loves that we love. It's, it's the, the, the love of the world is always, uh, uh, how, how do I say it? Con, is it conditional or transactional? Yes, but it's different from the love of Christ. So how should we find out the love of Christ? Paul said in Romans 12, renewing your mind until you will be able to prove the perfect will of God. Then you are walking through your all your action springs from love, then God will not be unjust to forget that labor of love that you are showing how towards people. Hallelujah. That's it. 
That's it. So service is always directed towards people. And you can do it because the love of Christ is dominating your heart now. That is where good work springs from. That is where good and right service springs from. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Can you ask God for right heart for service in the name of Jesus? That I will serve rightly in the name of Jesus. My heart is set right to serve. My heart is set right to serve in the name of Jesus. I have the right heart. I serve from the heart, oh God. Can you pray this prayer in any way? In any way, I've been motivated by eye service towards service, oh God. I ask that you forgive me and that you aid me by the leading of your spirit to, to act, to, to be led by love, to be led by the way of love in the name of Jesus. Oh, even what springs a, a healing power, the healing of God, the move of the spirit is always compassion. Jesus says, and he had compassion towards them. It's always towards people. Father, I pray that you will give us the right heart that is people-minded. In the name of Jesus, we are led by love. What triggers our heart, what, what prompts us to action is the love of the Father that is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And from this love, we will do right service because we know you are not, you are unjust. Your God is not unjust to forget the labor of love. We know that you will not forget our labor of love that we've shown towards the same. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you've brooded in us the right heart and the right mind to serve rightly. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.